Now, here comes the music. Hey, everyone. It's Buddy. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock Central Time. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the DJ Roundtable. Hopefully, we get some people in here and to Twitch. If you have not done so already, go to Twitch. Find the uh, the channel, which is TBM Productions underscore Buddy. If you're watching this in the replay on YouTube, you can watch it live on Twitch. And I'm here. Of course, Matt has been away for a little bit because he's been crazy busy. And busy. we're also having another honored guest here today. Sir, we go ahead and, uh, and say who you are and where you're at and where you're from and about your DJ service. I'm uh, Shawnee D. My name's Sean DeChico. I'm out of South Jersey. And um, I work for a company and uh, do mostly weddings, anywhere from, you know, 50 to 70, you know, weddings, events a year. And uh, I've been doing this since I was, uh, I've been working for the same company since I was 16, I'm 28 now. Um, so I've been doing it professionally right around 16 is when I started getting paid. So, and I did house parties for about two years before that, before I got picked up. So, but thanks for having me on. No, thank you for coming here. And as always, again, Matt, again, we miss you, man. I hope, you know, you had a touch of the COVID, like I had a touch of the COVID. Um, glad to see you've come back from it and you've been rocking and rolling every time we talk. And again, we, we all talk offline uh, quite a bit uh, about stuff. We always share information. And that's why I love this show, because we share so much information with everyone out there. We want to make sure that, you know, we're current with everything. We talk to each other so we know stuff's going on. And unfortunately, Matt, with his scheduling with customer meetings and so forth, has not been on here for a little bit. But I'm glad to have you here tonight, bro. I'm glad to have yeah. you here. I appreciate it. And again, Johnny, I, I appreciate you coming in tonight. Uh, thank you so much. And love to have you at wherever you want to come on. You're more always welcome to here, sir. Um, talking about well, a little before the show, uh, we started the show. Uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, YouTube and but YouTube algorithms. And uh, Matt, you were talking about your uh, plays on YouTube going down. And I know, uh, Sean, you have a, a YouTube channel, of course, and you have people watch. I watch your YouTube channel uh, as much Thanks. as I can, and as well as Matt and a few other uh, great DJs out there. Um, and it's always good information that, you know, I, I see both you guys are similar in YouTube as far as videos for your gig logs. You show the setup, you show what you do, you show everything that's going on and people dancing, having fun, enjoying themselves. And uh, one of the things I want to ask both you guys, have you seen a decline in your views or I know Matt was talking about decline. Have you seen a decline or have you seen about the same? I, or? I thought it, I thought at first that maybe, it was the thumbnail, but I'm still getting the same click through rate, uh, which is about 15%. So 15% of people that see my thumbnail click on it, which according to Nick Spinelli, anything above 10 is really good. So I'll take it. But uh, I'm just seeing like less views in general. And uh, I guess the first the first one that it showed up on, I posted on the week of DJ Expo and I was like, OK, well, that makes sense. You know, everybody's it was Monday night of DJ Expo week, like everybody's there. Uh, but then like the next two did a little better, but just not like not as good as my videos usually do and i'm not i don't i don't care about the views like it's more for clients to see what i do but at the same time like i spend a good amount of time editing these things and putting them together mm -hmm. and like you know i it's i i'd rather just spend an hour or two making a really nice 10 or 15 second reel and putting it on instagram and have it be seen by thousands and thousands of people versus you know spending 3 hours on a youtube video and and putting it on my computer air dropping it uploading it, adding a description, adding tags and spending all that time for what, 500 views. So, I mean, I, I, I have a, a YouTube lister on my website so like they could see like the most up-to-date gig logs, but maybe it could be because I removed my like link tree. I use this other one called drum. It was like link tree, but now that link tree is a lot prettier, I think I'm going to get link tree back and, and use that. But maybe that's why I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, the views just weren't, weren't, they're not, uh, not as big. And it's the same thing was with Instagram. Like some of my past reels didn't do as well. And now one of them's like blowing up because it's being suggested in the algorithm. All these people from India are, uh, it's, it's all like, uh, 
uh, Arabic writing, or I, I don't know what what it is, but uh, so Egypt, you're cornering the Indian market, the South Asian market, uh, cornering the, the South Asian market apparently because yeah. like the past thirty likes in the past two days have all been on the latest reel, and somehow it's hitting just. So that, that's the thing with reels; they the audio sometimes like even it, it trends, but it's up to Instagram whether or not you like hit the algorithm just right. Cause one of my, one of my reels that was like super viral had like 14,000 views and a uh, thousand likes. And you know, it was like confetti hitting at the right time to a Kesha song and it just blew up. But like other ones on average, I get about 3000 views on a reel and you know, 150 likes, which is good. But uh, you know, it's, I, when I, when I go to my gigs now, I have two tripods. I film the whole thing vertically uh, and then I film the whole whole thing horizontally for YouTube and then the vertical I do so that I could post my uh, stories and stuff on Instagram the day after uh, when I have a chance to go through the content. But with reels, you kind of have to be a little bit more strategic and, and go around the room getting the footage. You can't just have the camera in one spot because it's not as it's not as dynamic looking. Um, but uh, I'm also DJing and running lights and emceeing. I don't really have time to can't really go out in the room and capture stuff so it's right. it's an all, it's a struggle Co getting content is a struggle but yes yeah. it is um, oh yes it is it is hard shawnee how about you what, what have you seen with youtube yeah i mean I, I definitely noticed like a little bit of decline I, I didn't really know what it was i figured it was um maybe algorithm or something like that and i i mean last year we were trying to put out one every week um and then the guy that i had that was shooting and editing for me uh, like went to go film a documentary in like Ukraine or something like that. And he still hasn't been back. So I had to find a new guy. So then I wasn't putting him out for a little while and then kind of get him trained up and figure out how we were going to do it and then teach him how to edit. And now we're starting to move now. He's sitting on like five gig logs right now. So he's getting better at it, but yeah, I kind of decided it was better to try to delegate that stuff instead of, so I'm not focused on it, you know, so I'm hundred percent in the event as much as I can be. Um, now what we're doing is, uh, so I, I bought like a professional, like a $400 gimbal and that's what my assistant last year, he had like a nice black magic 4k camera. So we were shooting on, on that. So I bought him the gimbal so he could use that. Cause he was just getting started. Like he didn't have a lot of money. And, um, so now I'm teaching my new assistant to be able to use the gimbal. I have a DSLR, like a Canon 80D. It's not, not great, but you know, it's, it's not bad. So we were uh, shooting I, I everything. I can tell you, I can tell you both you guys, as far as look of your videos. And again, I do, and I'll be honest, I have a Galaxy S20, you know, so two-year-old Galaxy. And then they have a decent lens, decent, you know, camera. I, I, I edit on here, but you guys, the look of your videos, both of you, are just awesome looking videos on YouTube. Um, you, it, it's phenomenal the look of it. It's like, man, I want to get those shots. Now I know why $400 gimbal. <laughs> yeah. Or an iPhone. Yeah. Well, I use the um, the GoPro Max for my most recent, my last like six or seven videos. And that does pretty well in low light. Um, but you have to put you have to put the tripod behind the speakers because a lot of the problems we were having that we hit the kinks we had to work out last year was um, that the sound clips, whether you're using like a gimbal or, or a DSLR or something like that. So then we got the special microphone for the DSLR that takes uh, like negative 10 decibels out of the sound. So that helped a little bit. And, you know, it's it's just trying to get that audio not to clip to where you can put it in Final Cut. And you can always turn it up, but you can't fix, you know, peaked audio, really. So I'll be I'll be right back, guys. I, I get a I'm giving drop it. I'm, that mirror ball in my last gig log was not mine. Uh, OK, I don't have mirror balls. So I'm well, dropping that off of my storage unit to somebody. Come on. I'll back be on in. Me. Not a problem. Dude. I, we, we got our guy business to take care of. Come right back. Right. But uh, yeah, again, look for the video of you guys do, both you guys do a half a job. One of the things, uh, one of the uh, chatters have come up here, uh, DJ Diablin, which is down in Australia, mm -hmm. uh, real great guy, uh, Kurt. Uh, he's an awesome, awesome DJ down in Australia. Um, he was saying that uh, gig logs are dying. Uh, he said, yep, YouTube is a waste of time. I'm over it. So it, it's one of the things that he is saying in the chat that uh, YouTube is kind of a uh, um a pain in the rear end especially editing 
I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, again, I, I'm re-editing the video and we do an hour long or so show here on Twitch. And then again, we put it on YouTube and, you know, I, I edit a few seconds in the beginning and because, you know, we record and we broadcast a little different. Um, so there's a little editing done, but it has to render and so forth and so on. And I mm -hmm. render in 1080 and I have a very powerful computer. I have a very powerful gaming computer next to me with a, a very powerful um, video card and a very powerful processor. So and lots of RAM, and, but still takes like an hour for it to, to render that in 1080. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's 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 one of the things that you know I have an hour for that you know usually I can walk away and do something but it still takes like half hour or so to get the software up edit put in my bumper uh, put the video up there and then put it up there as a premiere on YouTube so people can watch it <clears throat> and one of the things uh, also is that uh, I I understand where Matt's come with the reels the reels seems to have more traction it seems YouTube is more I don't know. It seems a little bit more TV like, more show like versus for you for DJs. And it's starting to focus, starting to go more toward the Instagram. Uh Facebook, mm -hmm. which owns Instagram, uh, Facebook seems to be still okay. It's not as big as uh impact as Instagram. Um, I know guys who, who like to do TikTok, but TikTok's so short of stream, you know, and then you have the people like you think every song should be 30 seconds long and that's a whole that's a whole story that's a whole show in itself the the 30 second long songs but yeah. um you know it, it takes you know it takes some time to do it and I don't mind doing it I love doing it so and I because I, I do this full time to business full time I I looked at it as business time to do that because I'm I'm promoting my business and promoting everyone else's business to help you know and send this out okay sure. but also it's one of the things that it does take time to do and Mm -hmm. I understand everything you put into it and how sometimes it feels that you don't get the, the, the payback from it. And we're not looking at money. We're just looking at people to come see our content mm -hmm. and to share uh, the stuff, just like this, to show. It's all about sharing information. Um, Daniel Blood says it usually takes me five to seven hours to edit a decent gig log. That's yeah. It's a long yeah. time. If I, if I do a gig log, yeah, that's usually I'm here for a few yeah. hours. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I, I, I was doing it at first, like my first 15 videos or so, I was doing it all myself, but it was like three, four hours a night. And then I have a full time job as well. And then I have a, a young kid. So it was like, I, I, I really wanted to have more time to spend that time to be able to practice, you know, a couple hours a night. So that's when I started delegating it to trying to find other kids that were, you know, willing to and, do it. And you yourself being a family man, you want to spend time. I know you have a young child. And you want to spend time with them, and you know, uh, you know, this is the this is the learning time for them to nurture and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. um, my daughter is grown, and we actually, uh, my wife and I were grandparents. So we, when we have our grand our granddaughter here, um, it's about nurturing and trying to educate her and have her understand things. Mm -hmm. So if I'm streaming here, because uh, I chose to stream on on Twitch here uh, for music video, so I come up here and DJ because uh, I, I I have a, I have a very large music video collection. And uh, I do have weddings. I do have, you know, music video. I put the TV in front and run music videos. But, you know, I like to keep my practice, keep, you know, sharp. And, you know, we all work one way or another, practice or have a lot of weddings. We all want to keep that sharpness. But, you know, when I'm up here and she comes and wants to see, I explain everything to her. I want her to understand what's going on. And again, it's about education. You know, I want her to know her alphabet. I want her to know her, you know, mathematics, I want her to be able to read, I want her to write, you know, you're typing or a handwritten something, uh, you know, that's important stuff. And that's important to have that. And sometimes, again, taking that time, like, again, Kurt over here saying, you know, four, uh, five to seven hours, you know, you have someone, you're lucky, you have someone you can still hire to do it, but you still got to proof it, upload it, so forth, so on. Yeah. Uh, I have to communicate with them, still spending time with that. Plus also your regular job, plus the DJ business, plus, you know, everything else, you know, I'm sure the wife is also saying, hey, uh, we got to do this, honey, because right. honey do list never gets shorter, always gets longer. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but it, 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 it amazes me. And I, I hope that maybe things change for YouTube for all of us, because um, I, I really do enjoy YouTube. 
uh, as, as my wife would say, she goes, uh, you're addicted to YouTube. I'm like, hey, it could be worse things to be addicted to, like, you know, yeah, uh, you know, like adult sites or something like that. But YouTube, okay, you know, you can go down a rabbit hole very quickly, especially uh, following, you know, food channels or following, you know, car channels or following whatever channel. Um, yeah. You stumble across unique stuff. Oh, garbage trucks. Oh, I'll watch this. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, oh, okay, channel my inner kid, you know. Uh, but it's it's one of the fun things that uh, part of life is those uh, bumps. And again, YouTube does sometimes come up bumps. The um, one of the things, again, we were talking about before um, is your display and how you set stuff up. I will say you have you and Matt both have awesome displays. Just, Thanks. you know, you're you're out there in front. You're you're in front of the, in front of your gear. You have you, we were talking before. You have one booth. You have two booths, depending mm-hmm. on what is going on. I'm sure. Uh, hey, what's up, DJ Fire? Uh, there's two booths you have, and you have uh, two ways of doing things. And we we're talking a little about the bun booth. How easy it is to get into certain locations. You have another one that you actually got to cart in yeah. to locations. Yeah. And I know a couple of our DJs, great DJs, that have uh, the DJ booths that are on wheels and cart itself in. Um, the the one thing I had to ask is, if you had to make a choice, and you had to go back and look at what you bought, would you rebuy each booth? Or would you just buy one and keep stake with one? Uh, no, I, I would definitely do what I did. So that's a great question because I go over that all the time in my head. Because last year, I really took a leap of faith. And it was right after, you know, COVID was coming back. And a lot of people I was talking to were like, well, what if it doesn't come back the same way? And I, you know, I made a, a big jump. And I went out and I got a trailer and extra speakers and more trusses and TVs and cases, for <coughs> all of these things. And it was kind of a little bit uncertain, but, you know, I had a lot of faith that I was going to be able to pull it off. Um, But I really love spinning on turntables. Like a couple of years, like I've always used, well, I started with, I've had, I had had my first set was a pair of turntables when I would do house. What were your first set of turntables? They were like, they were the Stanton, like 32s or 38s. Like they, they, they didn't even have like enough torque to scratch, but like, I think when I got into it, I probably seen like DJ AM on MTV or something. Cause it had to be circa 2009 or something right around the time he died. And, um, he was like, yeah, like DJs can make a lot of money now. I'm like, Oh, I want to get that. So like I asked my mom for 500 bucks, I got some cheap turntables and a mixer and they basically sat, you know, in my basement and I'd go down and play them every once in a while. And then when I got into high school, people found out I had them and they were like, yo, why don't you bring the, the turntable? So we did that and it was crazy. And then almost every single weekend through high school, I was doing house parties and they just got bigger and crazier. And then some of them made the paper. And then that's when the TJ company figured out about me. And then I'm like, oh, I can make money. So from that point on, my weekends were, you know, open. So every job that I ever worked, it had to be Hey, I, I need off this weekend, every single weekend. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, back to the, the equipment. I, I think it was definitely great because um, so I'm in South Jersey. So mm-hmm. I'm sure you've heard of like SE, um, Jason Janai, Nick yes, Spinelli. Yeah, they're out. Jason they're yes, out of, yes. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of, of people in the, uh, he's with uh, Jason Janai, uh, he was a lot of people at Dish Jackie News, does stuff Dish Jackie News. And a lot of people at Dish Jackie News I'm friends with. Awesome group of guys. And if you guys are out there watching this, you have not gone to the Dish Jockey News channel, go over there and make sure you also show, uh, show both these other great DJs love too and go to their channels and subscribe to their channels. That's the other important part too. Subscribe to your channels, watch these great gig logs, watch this stuff because even watching the gig logs, you learn things. But yeah, I, I, I know who he is. You know, you're that, that Southern, you're in the Philly area and, you know, Atlantic yeah. City area and, Yeah, well, so I'm South Jersey, and they're, like, kind of more North Jersey, and um, the the markets are very, I think sometimes we kind of (coughs) cross paths as far, but for the Mm -hmm. most part, they're North Jersey, I'm South Jersey, and the market is, you know, it's way different, Um, so down here, the really Well, the accents are different, too, the accents are totally different between, like, up there, they have a New York accent, and you have more of the Philly accent. 
Right. Yeah. So I seen that they were doing like the DJ furniture and TVs and big moving heads. And I never seen that before down here. Like when I started like really assisting weddings and stuff like this, some 10 years ago, it was two speakers, the, the JBL G twos and half of the guys didn't even use lights. And I'm like, well, I'm bringing lights to house parties. Like, why aren't you guys bringing lights to, you know, weddings and stuff like that. And, and that's, you know, all you had to do was just be a good enough DJ and you just came and rock it. And like everybody basically had the same setup. And, um, you know, so that kind of pushed me into like, how can I set myself apart and stuff like that. So then the facade fad came in. So then I got the facade and did that and then the gig bar. So then I had the, the good lights and stuff like that. So I've always been, you know, just trying to push the bar and then somewhere around COVID or pre-COVID, I got into the Beat Junkies Institute of Sound Scratch School. And I went like head first into that and the Red Bull three style and, and trying to learn how to really, really mix on turntables. And then once I got good enough, I was like, well, I want to do this, but if I'm behind a facade, like nobody's really seeing what they don't know if it's a pre-mix set or this or that. So that's when I decided to go towards the DJ furniture route. So I really enjoy, you know, spinning turntables, but what buying all that equipment allowed me to do was kind of set myself apart from a lot of the, the local DJs who are great DJs around here, but I was just the only one who had, you want two TVs, you want four TVs, you want four moving heads. Do you, I got this, I got that. So it just, it kind of shook everything up a little bit. And I was able to offer the bigger package and the more flashier packages to, uh, you know, bigger clients and things like that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's taken me a lot of places. So, but I, you know, there's a lot of kinks that you had to work out in the beginning of like how to go about it, how long the setup takes. I mean, it, when it was just a controller, two speakers and a light bar, you're in and out in 20 minutes, 25 minute setup to when we go to the city. So there's a lot of big venues in the city that um, we work with. And if I'm doing a four TV package there and I'm coming with the trailer I'm, I got to get there seven hours before it's going to take us three or four trips up of the elevator. Somebody's got to stay with the car to make sure nobody touches anything. And then we would have to figure out what to do with the trailer. So at first we were taking it to the home Depot parking lot in South Philly was, which was 15 minutes away. So that adds another hour. And then we'd leave it there, come back, set up, have to go back and get it at the end of the night. And then what we started doing was going to the open air parking lots, back in the trailer in, and then park in the truck. It's a hundred, hundred bucks for parking a day, but you know, it's cost of doing business. And, you know, we were just, we'd have, we, it's a lot of setup time. And if I have that many, if I have four TVs and all these cases and stuff like that, now I got to bring an extra two, maybe three guys um, to make sure, you know, we can pull it off flawlessly. So there was a lot of things that maybe I thought would have been a little faster. It took a little longer. I mean, now like my basic, package we can do in a little under an hour about an hour but we still get to the venue three to four hours early um and you know with the trailer you got to drive a little bit slower um you always got to account for like a flat tire or something like that so you know there's just a lot of things that go into it but and that know. that's that's one of the things that kind of you're kind of similar to me uh my wife works with me she does the coordination time management side and we have a couple of people who work for us, a couple of employees. Um, they're DJs and they're also grips too. So they can, you know, spin for a while if I want to take a break or uh, if I need to, you know, got to use a little boy's room, you know, can go and yep. they can cover for me, um, you know, most of the part. Um, and, you know, even like the, you know, we had uh, one of our employees with us this, this past week in the picture I showed her our setup. Because we were doing, we did ceremony in one room and other end of the whole of the the facility, and then we had that room, and then um, we also had a gobo projector and had set that up. So it takes time, and I understand that two hour, three hour window you want for mm. to get yeah. there. And again, you're doing more TVs. I, I have one TV, and one TV takes me you know 15, 20 minutes to do one TV. I can imagine four TVs on four, 
you know, sticks or in four <laughs> totems and, you yeah. know, trying to do that and running, you know, uh, HDMI cable to a hub. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I understand totally. And that's, that's, that's a lot of work. Moving heads. Um, wh which moving heads do you have? Which one do you have? So I have the Suave 140 SR hybrids. Okay. And then I have the, the smaller ones that I just use for spots. If I'm doing four are the um, Suave 155s. So. I have the Chavez uh, 360s in white. Yeah, as you, as yeah you saw. nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very nice moving heads. They're just, Chave needs to figure a better way to connect them to the base plate. And the base plate has one screw in the center. Right. And it likes to try and spin as you're trying to put it down. I actually found what works best is actually a pair of pliers because when I use my fingers, I put so much pressure on them, I would bend those little brass, little, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, thumb uh, locks. So yeah. I actually use a pair of pliers each one. And it, it just takes time. It's easy. Once you put it on there, you get it all lined up, put it down and lock uh -huh. them. It's not, it's not bad, but it just takes time because you got to take your time doing each one. So you'll bend stuff. And yeah. I, I feel there should be a, a better way of doing it. And um, the other thing you hit, you have your, all your equipment's all black, right? You don't have a lot of white equipment. Other your bun booth's white. My bun booth is black, but my hoer board is white. Okay, that's the okay. I'm getting I'm getting messed up. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Um, but you have you have some white stuff, some black stuff. Your yeah. moving heads are all black, right? If I remember correctly. My moving heads are all black, but I, I'll interchange the scrims depending on you know what kind of setup I'm trying to do. If I'm doing more black, if I I could flip the you know the facade to black or you know to white, you know whatever I'm trying to make it look like that particular day. The one thing I have with my Chavez and um, which I hate, I bought the Chavez ca uh, cases and you, if you, you have Chavez, you get the, you get the Chavez cases, you know, they're form fitted yeah. for the lights. They're very, yeah. very tight and yep. you got to fit them in a certain way or they don't go in. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I have on my lights, uh, it looks like blue because the inside of the case has rubbed off onto the lights and it's, in like you know four or five spots so it's kind of a it's like oh god and i tried everything magic eraser i tried alcohol and yeah it, it's, it's still on there so it, it kind of stinks but yeah if you think about everything you're putting in there again all that work you know having three four people in there people you know when they hire a dj they hire matt they hire me they hire you and we all have different packages you know my basic package just starting package for you know for up to 80 people with you know two Maui five goes you know some basic lighting is you know 1200 bucks starting and it goes up from there you, you know that, that the one i showed you there that's you know 2800 dollars starting for that package and that was more than that um because of the fact that everything else they're doing the more elaborate it becomes, the more it costly becomes. People don't understand, hey, you know, $3,000 for a DJ or $4,000 for a DJ, why is it so expensive? Well, when you're running four TVs and you're having trussing and you're having moving heads and you're having, you know, a nice, that beautiful booth in front and having that facade with someone back there running your DMX system or like uh, Matt does the same thing. He has a guy who runs his DMX system uh, for the lights and, a sound you know it does sound <coughs> it adds up very quickly the hundred dollars for parking that adds up very quickly uh you have a trailer i have a sprinter mm -hmm. you know uh, mercedes didn't come and say here mr. here mr Mueller, here here's a free sprinter no uh, they didn't do that to me you know i, yeah. I had to pay I had to pay a monthly fee just like you know the, the trailer company whatever trailer company you get your trailer from you know they they said hey you know we want our money you got to pay for that trailer you want to add yeah. stuff to it tie downs whatever it all costs money but to have that look when you're done at the end of the day, you can look back and say, that's actually a nice look. Mm -hmm. And I know I showed you a picture of, a, of another DJ um, uh, that also, uh, you know, how his step was to mine. And again, I don't know what he charges. I don't know what he does, his experience and so forth and so on. It's like, you know, again, you you see that and it's like, okay, fine, great. And I understand if, it, he, if they, he has different packages and that's his basic package. That's all they paid for. I totally understand it. Uh, they, that was his high end package. It's like, okay, and again, that's what he feels is best for him. That's what he feels best for his business. 
I just feel that you, Matt, and I can't say me because I don't think I'm the same level as you are, uh, but a few other DJs take that extra step to get that beautiful presentation. And that for that beautiful presentation to have that beautiful look to have at the wedding, to have that focal point and having everything, it just takes time and it just takes that money. And you, as well as Matt, and again, there's a few other DJs come to mind. Uh, Rick Webb also does it too. Uh, a few other guys do it really well on YouTube, as well as, you know, in the real world. And you look at the setups, those setups right there just takes time. And yeah. People just need to understand that that's the reason why that you are a three thousand or four thousand or five thousand DJ versus a five six seven hundred dollar DJ. Um, right. Now let me ask you this one: um, When you talk to clients and you deal with clients and you're doing the wedding planning, you're doing music. Do you use an app or do you use? Uh, you know, you use like Excel. What what would you usually use to pull that information the, from the customers? The cus uh, the company that I work for, I, they use uh, DJ Intelligence. So it, they go in and you know they do the whole planning form and the music form, and then once I get it, then I call them or whatever and go over everything with them. Usually it'll be a you know an hour phone call or something, depending on how you know detailed they are. Some clients are super laid back and they're like we trust you play these five songs and you do the rest. And then other clients, you know, you really got to, I try to just dive into um, what their vision may be and then go a little more detailed on the music. Like, well, if guests are asking for requests, do we, are you okay for me to take them? If the crowd seems like it's going this way, are you okay? You know, if I go in this direction, would you rather more 2000s, hip hop or would you rather take more of the EDM route or a little bit of both or do you want more of the classic wedding stuff so I try to figure out because I feel like every couple or at least bride has some form of vision in her head of how she wants to go so you know I I, I have to remove myself a little bit of like you know because a lot of times you want to go and just do your thing like as if you're doing but you uh, with a wedding you have to kind of take into consideration you know what they want what will work um and you know i think every wedding's every wedding's different really yeah and that, that's that's one of the things that um i've heard plenty of times and i i totally i totally believe it tracy and i both uh, believe it for our business is that we do you know um a hundred weddings a year we don't do a, a one wedding a hundred times. So every wedding is different. Yeah. Every step is different. Everything is, if you look at any picture I set up on Instagram or that or anywhere, it's always slightly different because every venue is different. Every place we're different. Even when we go back to the yeah. same venue, there's different requirements for this time. This time we're doing a go, but next time we're not doing a go, but this time is a bigger amount of people. This time is less amount of people. This time is this, that there's always a variable there and customize it for each couple is important. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> oh, uh, DJ Diablin says looking into a roll in and roll out booth this year to save on setup. I, again, I, I know a few DJs that do that and they have some beautiful booths um, and it, it's great if you have venues you can roll in and roll out. But some venues, I did a venue out in Rockford, Illinois. Um, what used to be was built, the building was built in the early 1900s in a screw factory. It's called the Standard. Now the video is up on YouTube um, and they have, they don't have a direct entrance into the building and you got to go upstairs a fly of stairs. It's like six mm. concrete stairs made in like 19, 1920, 1919, you know? Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to go up. Now, once you get that fly of stairs, you got an elevator right next to you. Yeah. So it's one of the things like a booth rolling around, you wouldn't be able to do it. Um, yeah. And actually we actually had to have someone help us, bring stuff in and out just to save time. Yeah. Uh, and a guy came in, helped me load in, uh, helped Tracy and I load in. And then I came back and helped us load out. Great, awesome dude. Um, actually, is a wedding coordinator an employee that I know a wedding coordinator out there. And she, you know, she, she gave me his information. I have his information. And if I have run it again. I would do definitely do it again. Yeah. But it's one of the things that, you know, having that booth is great set up, set up. Sometimes it can be, a pain in the rear too yeah i mean so the first time i got the hoverboard 
it like on a because it, it's a company in germany so the he custom builds it once you order it and it said 400 bucks for a, a for euros or whatever for a flight case so i said oh that that's great and i i didn't you know ask any more questions so it came in and the flight case you have to build it so every time you get to a gig you're going to build this thing so we tried it one time when i first got it because i wanted to and it took us a half hour to build it and a half hour to break it down and then you got to put the turntables in wire it all up and i'm like this is never going to work on top of the setup we're already doing so then i went and got i got a custom flight case built for it that was like four and a half feet tall you know six foot wide whatever and you know it's it heavy is that casters yeah that yeah it's case? on casters yeah but i mean you need two guys to lug it around and the table is so awkward and heavy that you need two guys to pick the table up out of the the case mine i got the when we were designing it they decide i seen rick webb had the i think he designed it himself where the top goes on top of it but i mentioned that to the guy he's like that that top is going to be really heavy you don't really it'd be a side entry would be the way to go so i got the side entry and uh like i couldn't really it's just too it's too uh hard to lift it so you need one guy on the end one guy on the other end to pull it out <laughs> so i was always worried like I'm like, geez, what if my assistant doesn't show up? Like, I'm going to have to pay one of these kitchen guys to, to help me pull it out. <laughs> so, um, you know, we learned that. And also the, the S9 mixer, which I'm actually getting ready to push my S11 into the hoverboard. I just got to cut it out. Um, but the, um, I, 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 it only has the one microphone port and the, there's only one gain knob, so it's not great. So... Anytime I was using that mixer, I would run into an external mixer. And that's what I would have behind the facade. And then I'd have, you know, my whole rack and everything, microphones back there. Um, so that's one extra thing you have to set up. Now with the bun booth, the I got the, um, the SRT 1000 in there. That's what he recommended would be the best one because it's only 13 pounds. So it's real light when you're trying to put it in the case. It packs up in two bags. You could fit it in the back seat of a car. Um, so that was great. And it had two microphone ports. So if I didn't want to set up the, and the preamp's pretty decent. So if I don't want to set up the whole rack and the facades and the lights behind the facades and all that, I just want to come in booth, two speakers, lighting stands, then I can do that. So. See, I'm one of the, I'm one of those guys who relies on everything from the controller itself. Now I started when I, I back in the, mid uh, well early 90s uh, on two turntables was always my friend's turntables so yeah. i they, they all had techniques so mm -hmm. i did you know it, uh, the old techniques turntables and uh, yeah. i went and bought a mixer a sony mixer which was not really designed for djing it was a regular audio mixer didn't have a cross uh, crossfader and yeah. i got rid of that pretty quickly figure out that you need a crossfader with turntables to uh, <laughs> make it work better and i've always learned to dj with the, with the crossfader so i don't I adjust the volume, but I don't eat DJ at the volume knobs. I always do the crossfader. And the one thing I learned uh, when I got my first uh, controller, which was a Denon HT2500, mm -hmm. um, the mixer was a separate mixer, 19X mixer. I still have them. <coughs> is that crossfader to me is very important mm -hmm. and having the right stuff and just try and keep things light as possible. Uh, I have. And I still, I have it sitting there. I haven't brought it out yet. I, I use an SX2 as my main setup. I have a pair of CDJs and I two 900 uh, Nexus uh, CDJs and 900 Nexus mixer. Um, I've had for quite a while. And I have an SX2. And then I have sitting in, actually in my living room, my wife uh, is kind of mad because she's like, well, we're going to put this, you know, take this out because it's sitting here. We just bought it. I have an XZ. So I have it in the case or everything. I'm like, it, it kind of reminds me of my, of my CDJs. It's bigger. And I've seen a couple guys with that in a bun booth. And I'm like, okay, SX2 or 1000, SX3, 1000, it's all about the same size, a little mm -hmm. different setups. Um, I'm like, okay, fine, great. Those are not heavyweight when they're outside the case. They actually yeah. do it itself, you know, 12, 13, 15 pounds for the, I can see that. But when I want to say SX2, I'm like, 
that's a little heavier. And that bundle width gets a little bit bigger because it has to go deeper because the unit itself is so much bigger because yeah. they look at stuff. And I'm like, that seems like a little, you know, for a bundle, it seems a little too big, you know, and, I, you know, I, I know Joe Bund does a heck of a job with engineering and designing that. And he is a DJ as well, because again, he's, he's on YouTube and um, he goes out and DJs. But the thing is that uh, I feel sometimes the bun booth can be uh, a little bit cumbersome in certain situations. Now, again, you're lucky that the all the pictures I've seen and the videos I've seen, you're kind of, you have lots of room. You have a big room and a dance floor. Um, you're usually not stuck in a corner. Like, unfortunately, this past week, and I was stuck in a corner. <laughs> mm. which was not fun um you know it, that was not fun but that to me that bun booth i think gives you some uh and the other uh your uh, board uh just gives that freedom and that look that's nice and then having everything tucked behind the uh, facade i think is, is a great thing uh i also don't do a separate mixer i do everything out of the controller because the sound i feel at the microphones sound good um the, I, you know, you have two mic inputs, uh, you EQ them right, uh, good, good quality microphones. Yeah. Um, good quality stuff. But I know a lot of guys go from a controller into a mixer and then out to speaker systems. And I've always been like, why are you putting an extra step in there? You know, it's, it's like, unless you have multiple microphones coming, you need like five microphones. I'd rather just go right from the mixer directly to speaker and then EQ mm -hmm. that mixer. That mixer is built into the controller. And again, that also goes back to buying a good quality controller. If you're buying, you know, an inexpensive controller, you need to do stuff differently and EQ it much more than, let's say, a Pioneer or a nice uh, 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 Denon or a Newmark. Um, you need to really, if you're buying, you know, a, uh, if you're buying a uh, American DJ or something like that, you need to really do more work with it because I don't feel the sound card is as good as. Pioneer puts in. I think Pioneer puts a little better quality product in there, a little qu better yeah. equipment in there. But I've never been a thing of going from me to a mixer then out to speakers. Um, and I know yeah. you do it quite a bit because you have that bun booth and you have the stuff behind. What do you, and you said, just said just now, yeah, sometimes you go, you forego that extra mixer and to go directly to speakers. Do yeah. you hear a big difference in sound or do you feel it's the same or? Um, the SRT I was pretty impressed with. It's, a, it's pretty, it's pretty accurate. It's pretty good. Um, so I can definitely get away with, without doing it straight into the SRT. And the main thing was, you know, it's got two microphone ports, um, and it's got the, the, you can adjust the EQ. So there's a bass treble and then gain on there. Three so, EQ is important. Yeah. On the battle mixers, they just have the straight gain knob. So there's kind of a little bit less that you can, you know, do with it. And I didn't feel like I had as much control over it. Um, so that's why I got the external mixer. So the external mixer really helps in scenarios to where I'm doing a, a larger crowd or a bigger room. Uh, maybe if I'm like anytime I'm doing over like two, like pushing three hundreds, then I'm doing four subs and four tops. So in that scenario, it does help a little bit. Uh, I did a uh, an engagement party where they had a Barry White singer. They flew him in and he came in. So I had to put like reverb on his microphone and really EQ it properly. And he wanted a lot of bass. So that might, that really helped me do that. The RCF mixer that I have has like some built-in settings to where you can change it to like a smaller room or a larger room. So a lot of those things are subtly, you know, nice. Maybe it's not something that the average consumer at a wedding may make a difference, but you know, from a DJ, then you might be like, Oh, well, that sounds good. You know what I mean? So I don't think it's a hundred percent necessary. It's just a convenient thing to do. If either you're working with a lot of sound or, if you're using a, a battle mixer like an S9 or an S11 to where you have less control over that. So, um, yeah, yeah the, 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 the SX2, uh, the 1000, uh, the S XZ, the, those controllers right there, they all have, uh, the, the actually XZ actually has a separate area for a microphone versus, I mean, SX2 is like your, like your 1000, uh, three and four are your microphone and you do have the three, you know, high, mid, low, as well as gain, and volume yeah. control on each one. So I always, you know, my outer ones are, are microphone, my inner two are, 
my music. And I don't know many guys who do, I, I, I do virtual DJ. I don't know if you, you do Serato or virtual DJ. Serato. Yeah. Serato. Yeah. So I don't know anyone in Serato, virtual DJ or Redbox, if you want to throw that in there. Um, if you want to throw in tractor, I, I, I have a tractor computer too. <laughs> you want to throw a tractor in there. If you want to throw anything else in there, I very rarely see DJs have more than two virtual turntables or real turntables set up. Uh, because unless you're doing something really crazy and trying to do an ultimate mega mix with like, you know, four or six CDJs, yeah, you know, and you're doing something really crazy. I don't see guys doing that. And it, it's like, you know, I, I feel that, you know, having two mics either in the board or separate is more than enough. Um, again, if I did multiple mics or if I ran into a situation like you, I have run into bands. I have a Yamaha mixer, then I go into the Yamaha mixer. And then, you know, okay, I have 20, 23 channels, wherever it is. And mm-hmm. then you like hook up, okay, additional microphones or instruments into that. And then run it out to the speaker system and have that EQ. And then you have, you know, your gate for your gain and you have your gate for, you know, uh, for other things. And you can adjust much more uh, on that than you do with, you know, the DJ mixer. But, you know, for, I'd probably say 97%, 98% of the weddings, um, you know, the EQ that's in there, you can adjust um, pretty quickly into, uh, for most situations, the microphone and make it sound nice, natural, and clear. I hate when I hear people talk about that their DJ uh, sounded like Kenny from South Park or sounded like uh, uh, that they had no highs and it had just this muffled noise or they had the wine yeah. going the whole time. I, I I always listen to that stuff. And I think as a DJ, yeah, you are part sound engineer because you are not just mixing songs, taking songs, doing beat matching and checking keys and checking, trying to see what works and having your mind. Okay. If I'm doing this song, then I go in this song, then I can go in this song. Okay. You kind of think you're like three or four steps ahead of songs, but also you kind of kind of also change sometimes EQs and stuff like that. Sometimes you like, you know, I, I like to do personally like shop and dance with me when that uh, bass drum starts kicking in, I turn the bass up a little bit for it to give a little more emphasis upon that. So people hear that and they start clapping along to it at that back part of the song. And when he gets back, you know, and the, the drum goes away, he goes shut up and dance. I turn it back to normal and go the rest of the song that extra, you know, 30 seconds. Yeah. But doing some stuff like that, you know, adjusting your EQ and the fly like that, I th- feel that as a good DJ, you should always be checking and making sure that it, does, it sounds right coming out. Uh, the sound should always sound really clean and good. The the bad part I see a lot of times, you have guys who I call knob turners. And uh, there's tons of video on YouTube of guys just like they're touching knobs every five seconds because they make it look like they're doing something. They're really not doing anything. Yeah. If you're gonna, To me, if you're going to touch a knob, you're there doing it for a reason because you need to adjust something. And we all should be adjusting, you know, when we need to. But not just touching knobs to, I, I still feel touching a knob just to touch a knob, make it look like you're busy, yeah. means you're a good DJ. You know, mm-hmm. to me, a good DJ is someone, I, again, I've seen your I've seen your videos, I've seen Matt's videos, is having that right flow of music, the right option for music, and programming and understanding what goes with stuff. I don't mm-hmm. ever have a set playlist. When I when I go to a wedding, I have, you know, I use, I use a Vibo for myself, for my wedding stuff. And... um I get the I get the sheet, you know, from Vibo, and I go through and I pull the music for the client and get everything together. Um, Pre ceremony, like this is what ceremony. Uh, I have two right here I got to work on. Uh, pull all the music and stuff like that. Um, get everything all set and look at everything. But it's it's one of the things that I feel that having an understanding what the music is and have understanding the flow of stuff and make sure it sounds right. Because mm. different genres of music sound different. If you get some of the stuff from the 60s and 50s, they're not digital. And the thing is, they, they may need a little help. They may need a little, maybe a little quick, a little high, or maybe bump up the <laughs> middle a little bit, or maybe take down the bass a little bit because they're too bassy. Yeah. And you had your your singer there who wanted more bass and more reverb. And that's that's the important stuff to understand this stuff. And again, that's why I feel that part of the thing being a DJ, a good DJ is being also a little bit of a sound engineer. You know, I wouldn't mm-hmm. say I would can go into an engineer, a whole music track and do a whole band, like, you know, get some cool band to come in, like, you know, Foo Fighters 
coming in and engineer their 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 track. I couldn't do that. Sure. But taking the music that they did, I'm going to use some of the example the Foo Fighters did, and making sure your guests, your your uh, customer hears that song natural and it sounds just like they were their live the day Grohl and his friends were there live playing it and doing it justice i think it's a very important thing yeah for sure definitely so when you when you um go through I'm back by day, the way well i'm sorry what i said i'm back by the way yeah you know picture though your picture's off <laughs> oh. there you go there, <laughs> there he is, he is. <laughs> When you uh, when you guys go and set up, I'm gonna hit Matt real quick here because he just came back. Uh, when you set up for your gig, uh, I've asked this before. What is your practice song that you always use to listen to the room? Um, I use a uh, Bo- boom by Tiesto, and uh, yeah, boom by Tiesto because it it has great vocal. Well, if you use the not just vocals, but it's got a great build and it's got an excellent kick on the bass. And uh, I use that and then I'll test vocals with Hold My Hand, the Lady Gaga song, and also um, Harry Styles Sushi for a music restaurant because it's got that ba, 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 and you could really like hear the clarity of the speakers with that. And it's got a nice kick. So those are my three. And then I'll just throw on some like Laser Beam by uh, Ray Volpe or Ray Volpe. It's a EDM track for if you really want to get nuts, but those are mine. What about you, uh, Shawnee? I always like Hotel Room by Pitbull because the bass hits pretty hard. So then I kind of can, or like a, like a little John track or something that's a little heavier in the bass. So I can kind of see where it's going to go, but I really don't have like a set, any set song. I'll usually just pick a couple songs and start running through them or the formality songs, see how, and then I'll just start mixing for like 10 minutes and just get a feel, walk around the room and just try to get a vibe of what's going to feel like when I'm pumping it. So. So I, for testing the speakers, my go-to and it's been my go-to for a while. And this is because I found out that RCF uses this in Italy when they test the speakers um, is an inter Oh yeah. Because you have, yeah. You know, guitar in, in the beginning, you go into a bass drum and you have vocals and you have heavy guitar, which you have a bass guitar and a regular electric guitar and gives you that. And it's done before compression. So you don't have that digital compression hiss, which oh, okay. you get the newer stuff. Right. Then if I'm going to like a warm up mix, um, I'll do a little. Um, usually I do Cascade and Dead Mouse. Um, I, I'll do uh, probably that. I'll also go into uh, like uh, I'll do Concrete Angel. I'll do uh, um, I'll do a couple like EDM kind of style songs just to get my warm up stuff that I listen to, stuff that I right. like, mm-hmm. and just get that warm up feel. Uh, but Hotel Room Service that's that's a good one right there because that bass right from the beginning just just kicks. Um, yeah. Uh, and I understand why Matt also does like a sushi uh, uh, sushi restaurant one from uh, Harry Styles. Um, that that title has trips me up. It's like, wait, wait, what? But you also have, you know, you look at you, you look at songs like Billy Joe, you know, sing from an Italian restaurant. You know, it's like the same kind of concept, I guess, for 2022. You know, you gotta have that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's 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 one of the things that um, you know, having that, that, that song that you go to, those, yeah, that music you go to and listen to the room and see what is transpiring, I feel that is a great way to set up because not only you're testing your equipment, you make sure everything sounds right, but also you're ensuring you're set for success. Mm-hmm. Uh, Saturday, when I was doing <coughs> the first test, uh, um, I was listening to music and I'm like, it sounds muffled. It sounds off. It sounds horrible. Now I'm going through checking my connections. I'm like, okay, I'm going to restart my computer. Virtual DJ, Strato, uh, uh, they all do the same thing. Sometimes the software just likes once we'll go, hey, we're going to play a game today. We're going to play hide the highs or hide the lows. So I restart my computer, started back up, sound perfect. I'm like, okay. And those are the things, the reason why you want to do that and practice, you know, a little bit before 
the guests arrive just to make sure stuff works right. Mics work right. Everything works right. So when you go to use that stuff, you know, the green lights on the bottom of the microphone or whatever microphone you have. I have audio technica, so I have the green light in the bottom. So that little green lights on, I hand a microphone to my wife because we share MC work. So mm -hmm. she we we actually split the grand entrance. So she actually does a grand entrance, comes back to me for K cutting, and then she goes back to introduce people for her speeches, enhance the microphone, and then I do all the rest of the speeches, the rest of the night doing, you know, daddy, daughter, mother, son, and uh first dance. So we do things a little different here in the Midwest. I know you guys out there, you come in and you do the first dance right away and yeah. cake cutting right away and get it out of the way. For, mm -hmm. uh, here we do cake cutting after the grand entrance, speeches, dinner, and then the special dances are after dinner. So mm -hmm. every every area's got a little different area, a different thing. Um, I know out West, uh, I hear it all the time, their cake cutting's later at night. Yeah, ours is for the most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our cake cutting is soon they come in. Or it's like a nine. Like a nine o'clock thing. Yeah, ours is a non event. Yeah, our, ours is always an event. Like, they, yeah, cake they cutting, come, they don't even spot there. Yeah, they come in and get introduced and cake cutting. So it's like, but, you know, really? I hand up my so phone over to Tracy and she's talking. I want to make sure she knows she sees the bottom. It's green light. She knows she's on. She's not muted. She's ready to go. And as soon as she gives me the shake of the head, the volume's up. It's keyed at the board. She can go ahead and talk and sound clear as, as precise as possible. Now I always love it when dad wants to talk and take the microphone, drop it down and trombone it down to the middle of the stomach. You know, you tell him not to. And nothing you can do about that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask one last, I'm going to ask one last question for both you guys. Um, we're coming toward the end of 2022. This is a uh, fall official because uh, Labor Day weekend was this past weekend. And I know, Matt, you're in like 5,000 degrees out there in California, and the Southwest is uh, baking. Um, we were talking to a client that is in um, uh, Las Vegas. They were like 110 degrees, 115 degree weather. Uh, DJ Mikey Mike, who uh, is a retired DJ, but still does stuff. He just had his daughter's wedding. He's in California. Uh, he's in uh, more toward the LA area. His wedding was 115 degrees for his daughter um so yeah they're baking still out there but we're starting going to fall i want to know from you guys what do you see in your market because every market's a little different um what do you see your big trend is going into fall so shawnee what what, what do you what do you feel is your big trend uh well one thing that i've really been noticing is a lot of people are going away from formalities as far as like they want to cut the parent dancer short. They want to cut the first dance short. We don't want no bouquet, no garter, no cake, nothing. Um, I think over the last few years, I've been noticing that uh, people kind of expect more. Like you have to do a little more and you ha your setup has to look a little better. Like if I was just walking in, like I said before, with two speakers and like one light on the table or something like that, Back in the day, that could fly all day. But now people, they like expect a facade or they expect some lighting or, or something like that. So I think, you know, the trend is to be as clean as you can with your setup. And um, a lot of people are kind of taking less of the, we don't want the, the old school wedding stuff, the classics. Like we want either like 2000s hip hop is huge right now, making a huge comeback. and and then you have the EDM side of things or, you know, just dance music all night long. And, and that's a lot of it. I think the crowds are just getting younger and a lot of the stuff that my generation grew up on is they're all getting married. So there's a lot of that, like the, you know, the Spice Girls and NSYNC and Backstreet Boys and all that like throwback stuff from the, you know, 2000s, 2012, like, there's a lot of good music in that time. So a lot of that stuff is still relevant. Some of the new remixes are, you know, still relevant. So, you know, just keep trucking. Yeah. I think, I think, I think we see more. Um, I mean, we're seeing that too. I, I think over here, as odd as it sounds, like the setup doesn't really matter, um, which I, you know, I've never been of that mindset. I think that you should always look presentable and have a beautiful setup, but you know, I had, a couple weddings this well i did one wedding this weekend i was photo booth for 
And I mean, the guy just used a banquet table, set his mixer and a coffin case on top, had two speakers and nothing taped down, nothing gaffed, you know, a bunch of ugly looking lights on a stick, but he had the whole place rocking to some Persian music all night long. Um, yeah. So like, you know, and I, I don't know, he probably didn't get paid as much, but I think out here, I'm noticing more of like decor styling. Like we're seeing like boho chic, like Coachella. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but like boho chic is like the thing out here. And like uh, that very rustic kind of look. And yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of like the 2000s and a lot of like my couples are the couples that like are my, you know, I'm 31. Am I? Yeah, I'm 31. Uh, and a lot of the couples that I'm DJing are like, the same age as me to where they went to music festivals and like EDM fest, like Coachella and, and EDC back in like 2010 and want to hear stuff like clarity and titanium and, you know, the old, like, and, uh, like call on me, like the old rave kind of throwback stuff and sandstorm and, uh, stuff like that has been going off for me. Um, I always try to mix new, like newer EDM in there, but it's not as, not as easy for weddings, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the hip hop is, you know, 2000s hip hop is is your gold mine and 90s hip hop. I don't think it'll ever get old, but uh, yeah, I, I I think it's more like out in Sean's area that like you know people want a nice looking setup. Um, it's it's a little bit more like I mean there there's so much competition out there that you need something to like differentiate yourself. But like yeah. the venue I was at, the venue I was at twice twice this weekend, like they don't pay like uh, the one I was at twice this weekend, like. I started picking up some gigs as like a white label DJ for this company on like my off days and, uh, or any dates that I need to fill. And they only really require like if the bring one little, what they call a blinky light on a table. Okay. And I'm like, I don't want to make this look shitty. I don't want to make it look bad for the clients. I want them to not be dancing in complete darkness with, you know, a little Kinta. So I provided the, the LED bars on top of the speakers and it looked great and it, you know, took me 10 minutes. So, um, I don't know though. It's, I, I think I I'm seeing a lot more people, like a lot more interest in my sparklers. Like I'm getting, those are like almost automatic add-ons now, uh, and photo booth. I know some people on YouTube think that like photo booth is dying. Like that's, that's like gold mine for me. Yeah. I, I, I bought the photo booth in, 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 I think April is when we first started using it. I bought it in March first used it in april it's already paid off and it was like seventy five hundred dollars so uh you know paying something off in under six months i think is is uh is shows that the photo booth is not going anywhere yeah and that's, that, the important that's thing. you invest, cool. money, you invest <laughs> money in stuff you want to make sure you get a return on investment on that stuff we're, we're seeing we're, we're seeing a lot of um i've had a lot of people want a single so like, I don't know if you saw my story a couple of weeks ago, but they wanted like black and white or color option, like where the user could choose with just like, instead of a designed print, they just wanted the full four by six with their little like monogram on the top left. Uh, I've had a lot of clients ask for that lately, like where they just want a single print because they, you know, the photographer is going to take pictures with all the guests, but like the guests aren't going to get those pictures. Whereas like they take it in the photo booth and ours is a DSLR. So it looks really, really nice. People have something that they, you know, people are giving away frames and their little goodie bags or whatever. So, yeah, that's photo booth's been a hit for us. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, California is always California. People are obsessed with Coachella out here and everything Coachella like. So, it, well, it you, bleeds you, into you, weddings. You live in the, uh, the neighborhood and you're not too far away from a Hollywood. And, uh, yeah. you know, those people in Hollywood uh, love, uh, uh, they, they love that uh, pomp and, spectacular stuff so you got yeah. you know you got a bunch of yeah. Ferraris parked in front of your venue you're going into dj and uh you, you don't expect it to want to be very chic and very um very cutting edge for design out there then you might be wanting to reevaluate yourself as a dj out in that market and just like out east you know in your area um you have to be aware of what's trending in every area and same thing here in the Midwest, we're, we're seeing a decline in the amount of, you know, bar, garden bouquet toss. And uh, this Saturday, uh, the wedding, uh, the bride uh, can't have a uh, cake. So there's no cake hunting. Mm. And that, that's fine and great. And, you know, I've done weddings today, forego did the special dances. So no daddy, daughter, mother, son, or uh, first dance. Uh, I was 
talking to uh, Jay Brandon and he's talking about one of the weddings he had. The, his bride and groom did nothing and all they want to do is be, they don't even want a grand entrance out of or announced during cocktail. They came into the room and he goes, uh, I'm going to use generic names here. It's Jalais Jelen, bride and groom, Bob and Sue are here. That was it. Mm -hmm. They walked in the, in, into the uh, cocktail hour. And I think that's very elegant of a design. It's kind of like, you know, you're suave, you walk in, kind of like a James Bond kind of feel. And again, that's the uniqueness about that wedding he did. And he is just like, you know, us, you customize it for the client. You make sure the client gets exactly what you want. And we were talking about, you were talking about before how the, the bride has this vision of their wedding. They've been dreaming about their wedding for a long time. And grooms do too. But I think brides are much more engaged than the grooms are in that end. And we want to make sure for both of them, it comes to fruition of exactly what they want to have for their wedding. Uh, they both have ideas. They both have uh, thoughts uh, for both halves, uh, the couple getting married. But we want to make sure both sides of the couples are taken care of and that they, um, they're, they're both sides are happy and they exactly what they want. You know, you get one uh, person that likes country music, another person likes EDM, or one person likes, you know, rock, another person likes to have oldies. You know, it, it all boils down to what they grew up with and they understand. But also, you know, asking those questions beforehand to make sure, hey, are you a big fan? Like one of the things I have, uh, one of the ways that come up, they want no rap. They, I mean, they want no rap, no pit bull, no, you know, no 90s, no 2000 <laughs> rap whatsoever. They don't want it. A couple That's of those, right. yeah. I've had a couple. What can you this, do? This one I have this weekend chose the one I have this weekend chose there's three different hours of dancing, and they chose like exactly an hour and a half of music for each of those three. And they're like, Feel free to add stuff, but like these are like the 15 or 20 songs that we absolutely want to hear during each of these sections. And like the third one is all like tech house and deep house and they're like go crazy with that but the other two they're like ah eh, for our family and friends like you know until all of them leave like yeah and it's all just your basic you know dancing queen and levitating all you know it's not like it's out there music but it's just like they're they, it's like they did too much planning instead of just like saying hey like here's the genres we want you know and i, and I don't mind that like I, i'm the kind of dj like i know buddy's very like against it but like if a couple gives me a playlist with 60 songs that's easy for me because then it's just there's my playlist and then I maybe, you know, go into my wedding crate and add whatever to fill in the, the what I think, you know, hits my mind at the right time. But like I would almost rather have a couple give me a wedding playlist of 60 or 70 songs. Well, maybe not that many, but like 50 songs. And then then just them giving me a must playlist of like three and saying, oh, you know, we like hip hop and, and EDM. And I'm just like, I, I, you know, I, I, I can I, I can I read a crowd, comments. but. I love my clients 10 must play <laughs> songs. And I also, you know, special, you know, they're, they're special songs. If they're doing a daddy, daughter or mother, son or any of those special songs, obviously, you know, those songs are, they, it's, it's what exactly do they want. But I say, you know, give me 10 songs because I want to see what the crowd is doing, what the dance floor is doing and what is working, what's not working. Just because a song they pick sounds good driving down the street in the car, singing on top of their lungs. Yeah, may not translate to the dance floor. And 100%. I, I've been doing this for 18 years and I've seen that over and over again. People give me a playlist. Here's 65 songs. And it's like, oh, okay. Uh, do you want your request? You know, and it's like, you know, they want, no, no I, yeah, yeah, we want requests too. Okay. What are your most popular ones you want on here? You know, it's a lot of these songs. Yeah. So many songs in here are give me, I'm going to play. Okay. You have Cupid Shuffle in here. I'll probably, I'll, I'll probably play Cupid Shuffle. Or, hey, you have Wobble in here, I'll probably play that, you know, depending on your crowd. You know, I want to see what your people are doing, what they're requesting there. Uh, the wedding this past week, and before the dance floor opened, we had three sheets of requests, plus the father of the bride came with a handwritten uh, a napkin on a bunch of freestyle music during cocktail. And I saw the list of freestyle music and I'm like, I'm a big freestyle fan. So I was, I, during cocktail hour, I spent, you know, cocktail hour was an hour and a half. I spent about 40 minutes of cocktail spinning, you know, 90s uh, Latin freestyle music. Cool. I love that. That's music I, I love. That's why I learned to, to DJ on. So yeah. I, I spent that for, you know, a while and doing all the stuff with George Lamonts and, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> 
Blase Fair. I can go through a whole entire list of all the stuff there, putting all these songs in there and doing it and having that vibe. And it, it, her dad was ecstatic, like, oh my God, you know, it, it's one of the things, you know, I want to please those people. I also want to please the bride and groom. I want to make sure that they had exactly what they wanted. And I feel at the end of the day, we want to give our clients, we want to help our clients out, but we are the DJ. They're paying us to be a professional. And I just feel when I get handed a list of 65 songs that they think I'm Spotify. I'm just, I'm just a, a MP3 player. You want to go back to old school? Right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> you know, I, I'm an MP3 player and I'm not one of those. I'm, I want to look at the dance bar. I want to see, I want to play what they want to hear. You know, give me songs you want to hear and let me, I want to play those songs, but let me figure out when and where can I put those. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the playlist can be a great thing or it can be something that can hurt you in the long run and it can go both ways. And I've seen it go both ways to where like the list is way too big. And I just know that, you know, a lot of these songs aren't going to work. And then we try them and then they don't work, but they wanted them on there. So and then there's also been times to where you're like, there's no way this is going to work. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, like a paradise by the dashboard light or something. But some families like they got this lake house and they got 30 people go down to the lake house every year and they get drunk and they sing it so like when you play it it goes off you know what i mean so and i i, there's, I love that <laughs> you, know, you don't know when those moments are so you try to figure out them details with it and then you try to just trust your gut i guess is the best thing you can really do in the moment one of the best things i always tell people about is we had a bride this is going back a few years ago um she had a playlist of like 25, 30 songs that she's like, I got here these songs that dance floor. I'm like, okay, well, which ones are the most important ones? I got here them all. And people were, dan- people were dancing. I'm in the middle of a Pitbull song. So, you know, Pitbull, Pumps, Pitbull, you know, we're just talking about your, your play, you know, your, uh, Hotel Room Service is your jam. I can't remember what Pitbull song it was exactly, but it was a popular Pitbull song, a new release from him. And people were on the dance floor, including this, like this guy, he must be in his seventies out there. He had like three or four younger girls and they're like, they're, they're 20, late twenties, early thirties. Just having fun. He's out there. Grandpa's out there dancing, having fun or old uncle so-and-so. And she comes along and she goes, change the music. I don't want this. I, I want my mm. music. That's all. So tough. Tracy's like, you really want to do that? And she's like, yes. So Tracy like, hey, you know what? Uh, she, you know, she she wants her her music. I'm like, what song does she want? She wants her first song on the list. First song on the list, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown, which is not a bad song from the 70s. Um, it, you know, it it, it it talks about a guy in the south side of Chicago and a junkyard dog. And it, it's it's kind of like a folky kind of song. It's kind of a something you would play during cocktail, you know, for people who like 70s music. It's a great song but really can't dance to it. It's not really high BPM. It's not really danceable music. It's not like disco or something like that. Something you can get people going on, uh, on that rant, disco rant. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's like, okay, I play it. The dance floor parts like the Red Sea and there's no one out there. And then <laughs> yeah. I go to the next song of hers. No one's out there. And a couple of friends go up to her and they start talking to her. She comes over. She goes, okay, you guys are right. You know, play stuff that people want to hear. Okay. Put the request sheet back out. So I go on the request sheet, throw in another popular song, boom, dance floor packed again. And that's why I feel that our, us as DJs, that's one of the things that we need to do is read a dance floor. Yeah. We want to make sure it speaks about the customer. Yes, it definitely. I never, I, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, well, you know, I don't want to hear what you want. What, I don't want to play what you want to hear. I'm going to play what I want. No, it's not about me. It's always about them, especially, you know, again, I do weddings. That's all I do. And that bride, that groom, or that groom and groom, or that bride and bride, whoever the case may be, I want them, the couple, happy. I want them to look at and say, I had fun and enjoyed it. My friends, my family, my coworkers, whomever I invited there, the dog catcher, the mailman, whatever, they all enjoy themselves. I don't want them to look at me and go, well, yeah, you didn't, you didn't do this, you did that. And I've had brides that go, I give you this big list. You didn't play everything I, I, I had. I'm like, well, you had requests. Well, yeah, I want my songs played. You didn't play this song. You didn't play that song. And it's like, 
you know, well, you gave me too much music. Well, how can you play it? I'm like, because it wouldn't work. And, you know, yeah. it's not I'm trying to be meaner to that. It's just that, you know, you're seeing stuff and you look at the song, you're like, okay. And sometimes, you know, yeah, you do get those songs that you talk to them. You find out, hey, you know, we are a big fan of Meatloaf and then fine. I have no problem with that. I had a wedding last year, my last wedding last year in Elgin. They're a big Meatloaf fan. So we had, you know, five, six people singing along, other people dancing along and singing along to the song. Probably had, you know, half the people a little bit later on, but probably half mm. the people there were out there singing and dancing, you know, having fun with it. That's, I have no problem with that. Yeah. But, you know, having that right, like when you first start, I, I also don't want to alienate people either. Right. You know, oh man, we yeah. went through a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> I can't thank you guys enough to be here tonight. And I appreciate you guys coming in here and spend some time. Uh, you know, Matt, I appreciate, thank you so much for coming in tonight. I know you had some stuff to get done. Then you just got done, you know, uh, you're just trucking along out there in California and, and Johnny, I, I can't thank you enough for coming in for the first time. And again, I hope to have you back here. Uh, and I, you know, if you want to be a regular, please, you know, just tell me what you want to do, man. That's entirely up to you, you, and uh, I'd love to yeah. have you back here again. You're you're an awesome guy. Love your work. Uh, you you put out there, Matt. Love your work too. You guys, you know, you guys do some really good stuff out there, and you really are uh, are great uh, people out there showing some great ways of doing things. And uh, just love the fact that uh, you know you come here and share some of those uh, those those information, those those main those uh, brain nuggets, those mind nuggets that you have, and just share a few of them here and there and. Uh, make us all, everyone here, a little bit better of a DJ. And hopefully down the road, just, you know, we can go back and say, hey, you know, you did this. Oh, hey, I did this. Oh, yeah, it's a better way of doing something. That's that's the, that's the thing. That's the ultimate goal of this show. And if you guys are watching it here on the replay on YouTube, you could watch it live on Twitch. We're on Twitch t uh, twitch.tv. You can look for TBM Productions underscore buddy. That's TBM, so Tom Boy Mary productions underscore buddy and you can follow me on twitch on there and i do dj on there do music videos if you have not done so already again go to their social sites on everything they're on instagram they're on youtube they have great stuff contact on both uh you uh you had facebook too both you guys yeah yep facebook so you, you know your social media you find it i know i know some people will do tiktok you guys are doing tiktok you know, your social media, normal social media stuff, make sure you follow them, find them. If you can't find them, DM me on Instagram. D you know, you can send a message through YouTube. I will find them for you and send a link to you so you can follow them. They have great stories, great things to follow, beautiful weddings, beautiful events, beautiful parties they do. And watching those gig logs, watching that stuff, you can learn a lot. You know, you can see how stuff is hidden, you know, especially cables. Well, as DJs, we always try to hide cables as much as possible and having that uh, that beautiful bun booth out front and run those cables behind and make sure it's hidden that guests don't see it no one sees it and it's hidden beautiful beautiful stuff those uh, that facade hides a lot which is great <laughs> our hidden little secret behind the facade don't look behind the facade i don't have i don't have time to tape down the cables like sean does i don't want people to see my legs or anything behind, behind the table I read those things differently. Again, I have I have my 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 table, my DJ table with the scrim on there. You know, everybody's got everybody's got a different way of doing things, and that's that's a great that's a great uh, thing about this is all about little differences. But I want to thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Thank you all for watching. And if you're watching the replay, you want to come in, go to his chat. And D DJ Dynablend, thank you. And DJ Fire, uh, he said he couldn't be in. He's having a problem with wisdom tooth. I hope you feel better, man. Uh, so hopefully you're back here next week. Other than that, you guys enjoy yourselves. Be safe. My pleasure. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Take it easy.